Hello there. I'm Nan Simonson. I'm a lifestyle and health coach at Lifestyle Medical. And I am so glad you're here for our cooking class, our October 21 cooking class. I'm sorry I'm not here. I'm trying to make it for every class. I believe I will be through the end of the year, but this month I needed to be away. I'll be out of the country. And so I'm saying hi to you from afar. However, I am going to invite you to email me your questions. I enjoyed that part of our class last month and I will be available to answer your questions, but not live. I will be on another um, time zone and I'll have to respond the following day. So while I'm thinking about it, let me give you my work email and it's aging powerfully with Nan. I think most of you by now are familiar with my book, Aging Powerfully. And so it's aging powerfully with Nan at gmail.com. Write me your questions. I'll get back to you the next day. All right. Why do I have these out? Because today's class is going to be on something very basic. It's as basic as cooking a bean. It's as basic as something that you can do with that bean every day. And then it's as basic as a wonderful recipe that you can serve for a meal, make extras of to freeze for another meal. And what is that bean? It's the chickpea or the garbanzo bean. So I'm showing you and you'll have your recipes that you can print out or save in your computer. The yummy um, uh, garbanzo bean um, or yummy instant pot garbanzo bean recipe is the first one because you're going to be, I'm showing you, even though you don't have to make any of this with uh, dry garbanzo beans that you have cooked. You can simply use a can, but if you can get organic garbanzo beans, you can get them for a great price. And they don't have to be organic. I just tend to use everything organic because a lot of legumes and grains are sprayed. But in any case, you start with your dry garbanzo beans, you soak them overnight. The next day you cook them. You can cook them on the stove and cook them for 50 minutes to an hour and a half, depending on the kind of bean. I like doing it in my Instapot. If you don't have an Instapot, uh, consider the investment. This is a six quart, you can get them at Costco. I also have an eight quart. The proportions that I have in this recipe are for the eight quart because I'm cooking two pounds of beans in my eight quart. This is the six quart, so if you have a six quart, go ahead and half the recipe. I actually, truth be told, did this full recipe in the six quart, but it worried me because when I released pressure, it was so full that I could see that the steam coming out was, um, it was clogged with bits of garbanzo bean and things like that are not a good idea for a pressure cooker even though the Instant Pot is probably the safest pressure cooker you'll ever use. Uh, so six quart, half the recipe, eight quart, use the full recipe with two pounds of garbanzo beans. One of the things you may be thinking is, what would I do with all those beans? Do what I do. And you'll see me talk about it on this, but I'll just show you. This is what I did with my two pounds of garbanzo beans. I made, was it four of these? Um, I simply kept spooning. What I did is I drained, you're gonna see all that. Drain it, cool it, freeze it, and then um, spoon it once frozen into the baggies. You could even put them into the baggies not being frozen. When you get them out, it'll feel like a brick, but when you drop it on the counter, they'll break apart as long as you had drained them well enough. So you've got the bonza beans this way or by the can. Again, if I buy them by the can and I do, I'll buy them organic and heck, you can get a can of garbanzo beans organic from Trader Joe's or from a number of markets for only 99 cents. 
Then the next recipe is a hummus. And I use this little uh, food processor, but any food processor will do for this recipe or your blender. Uh, you wouldn't even have to use either of those. You could mash them, but you're gonna have a much rougher consistency. And so I prefer the food processor. And what does the hummus look like? You're gonna see in the video that it's a beautiful red because I use a roasted red pepper that I buy in a jar and you'll hear the details on that and in the recipe. And what do you do with this? You, mm, it smells so good. You may be thinking, should I pay attention to this? Yes, you should. Because you can dip, this is a blue bean chip. You could dip it with a chip. You could eat it with crudités, your raw vegetables. This is my favorite application. I just had it for lunch today. This is a purple sweet potato. I get the Frida's Stokes purple sweet potatoes. You can even order them online. I put hummus on them. I've made dinner and lunch meals out of this. I won't take a bite because then I'll have purple sweet potato in my teeth. No, thank you. It actually is not a big deal. Um, but, oh, the combination of sweet potato and hummus, whether it's a white sweet potato or the orange, but I like the white or this purple best with the hummus. So why make hummus? You'll use it all the time. In a whole food plant-based diet, which is what I eat, which is what we're encouraged to travel close to in um, lifestyle medicine, you want sauces that you love. I have a number of dressings on my website, nansimmonson.com. You've gotten a lot from the Facebook page at Lifestyle Medical. And you want dressings, you want sauces, you want whole food, plant-based things, and mine all are oil-free, uh, to put on your food because you can take something as simple as a sweet potato, black bean, steamed broccoli, some hummus or some, um, tofu, sour cream, cream and um, pico de gallo, and you've got a meal, yum. And then finally, you just need something to cook things in. And what I've given you the recipe for to turn your garbanzo beans into a wonderful curry that you can put over a white rice um, is a saucepan. You need a saucepan of any size. This one happens to be seven quarts. It can be anywhere from four to whatever, but you need your saucepan as well. So you have the basics, making the garbanzo beans, something simple that you'll have all the time, I hope, in your refrigerator, to a meal that you'll make for company that's absolutely delicious. I hope you enjoy this class. Write me your questions. I'll get back to you. I'm so sorry I'm not with you today, and enjoy the class. Bye-bye. One of the things I'm gonna show you today, or the thing I'm gonna show you today, is how to cook what I call my staple in my whole food plant-based diet, and that is beans. And in this case, I'm showing you garbanzo beans. I'm going to just start it, and then I'll get back to you at the end and show you what I do to store them. I actually keep them in the freezer like a bag of, um, oh gosh, corn. In other words, they're frozen separately, they're in a freezer baggie, and I can unzip it and pull out hands full for a hummus or for a curry um, to defrost and put on my daily salad, and it's a convenient way to do it. So let's get started. I had two pounds of chickpeas, garbanzo beans. They look a lot just like this when they're dry, except that they're more wrinkled. And I, um, let me back up. Two pounds is about four cups. And I had two pounds. By the time I soak them, they double or triple that amount. So I'm gonna put them in my eight um, Instant Pot. I love the Instant Pot because it's easy. I get to walk away and it takes care of itself. Also, pressure cooked beans tend to have their most difficult to digest parts broken down and for some people they're easier to eat. 
You can also control the sodium. When you buy canned beans, you pay more for beans that have um, low sodium or they're harder to find. And so it's just easy to do. This morning before we went on our walk up the mountain, that's about an hour um, that we go up a local mountain, a four mile path. I put on the beans to soak, not put them on, but I put them in a bowl to soak and um, they're ready now. It's what, 4.30 and so what is that, a nine hour soak? That's long enough. I have a bag of kombu. I bought some online. They came from Korea and on the back, there was a warning that there could be heavy metals in the kombu. Boom, that went out to my compost pile. And this is from Japan, hand harvested, cold, clear waters. Um, I know they had a nuclear spill there, but um, I trust this brand. And the point of the kombu, it's a sea vegetable, is that you add some minerals, you only need a half of, you know what, I'm gonna throw the whole thing in. Um, you get some minerals from it, and some say that it makes the beans easier to digest. I like the little bit of flavor, that's that um, little bit of salty um, umami that I get from it. I'm also going to add some herbs. I have a couple of bay leaves. I grow a little bay plant. It's uh, Laurus nobilis, that's um, bay laurel. And I keep it, oh gosh, just a few feet off the ground. Otherwise it'll become a 60 foot tree. Uh, but that way I have fresh bay leaves. I have some oregano, um, some call it margarine oregano. I'm gonna throw that in. I have some, um, rosemary i'm going to throw that in and i'm also putting in and i don't have to do any of that i could just leave it plain especially if i am not going to use the what they call pot liquor that means the the juice from the or the broth from the beans but i like it you can put that in rice you can put use it to cook vegetables i think it's really flavorful and I'm gonna put a celery, a carrot, boom. And then I'm gonna sink this onion. If I chop up the onion, even have it, by the time I get it out of there, I'm fishing it out and it's falling apart. So I just sort of quartered it and kept the stem intact. And I'm gonna bury it in there, but I'll be able to get it out easily. On top, I'm going to put four cloves of peeled garlic. And I like a little spice, so I have a couple of dried uh, Thai peppers I'm going to put in. Now, in the um, pressure cooker, when you're making beans, you don't have to cover them with water uh, the way you would in a pot, unless you want plenty of pot liquor. So I'm starting with eight cups of water, and oops, it's coming to just even with the beans, and I'm going to leave it at that. I want the pot liquor to be concentrated. I don't want a lot of it. Sometimes I can use it for another super stew, but I already have that in the freezer. You know what? I'm gonna put a little bit more because it wasn't covering the vegetables. And we're set. I don't know if you knew this, but your Instant Pot has that handy feature that allows you to do something with this big awkward cover. Put it on, snap it in, set pressure cook, it's on high. I'm gonna set this, because they've been um, soaked, I'm gonna set this for 18 minutes, and that's all. With this pressure cooker, it's going to start. I have a six quart as well, and I do the maneuvering, and then I push start, and in this case, I don't have to, and you heard that beep, 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 that was saying to me, okay, we followed instructions, we're on. I'm gonna let this cook. It, it's gonna take a while to come up to pressure. I'm gonna let it cook. I'm gonna let it naturally release for at least 20 minutes, um, and then we're done. Now, if I didn't want a natural release, I would let it cook longer. I would have it cook, oh, six minutes longer, and then I would release it within five minutes of cooking. But I like to do it this way, and I think it's the best way. And I have a recommendation for you. Jill Nissenau is a, uh, has a graduate degree in science and she's a registered dietitian. I really like her book, Vegan Under Pressure. Uh, 
she's creative, she writes well, her recipes um, turn out deliciously, and um, that's a recommendation. Vegan Under Pressure, Jill Nissanal, you'll find it in Amazon, and I'll talk to you in just a bit. Hi, Bye -bye. I'm back. So the Instant Pot came to pressure, went through 18 minutes, released pressure or, or um, natural release for 20 minutes. I took off the pressure. Everything was done, oh gosh, actually a couple of hours ago. I've unplugged the pot, that's why it doesn't have the light on. And this is what it looks like inside. And you see that? You can even see my scored onion. So I'm going to lift the things out that I'm not going to use into my compost bin. And that's the celery. Oh, look what happens to the kombu. It's just um, kind of rubbery. I've tasted it before because I really like it, but I decided I'm not going to eat it. Um, don't know why, but I didn't. And I'm getting that garlic out, a couple of peppers, because I put these things right on top. They're very easy to find. And here, let me tilt it a little bit. And get the rosemary out, my bay leaf, the carrot. There's a little bit of um, herb that sort of disintegrated in there, but that's okay. All right, now I've got these beautiful um, chickpeas. The way I know they're done is I squeeze them and it feels, it feels firm enough, but they break down immediately. Mm. They're really flavorful because of the broth. And then this is my setup. You saw that, well, actually I've taken the, the cover off and I washed it. Put that back on. Put this back. And I have a strainer, don't use plastic. You don't want hot things going through plastic. It displaces some of the plastic and the chemical and you don't need that. And I'm going to pour this still hot broth and beans into a bowl. And I'm going to let them this continue to drain for a while because what's going to happen is that I'm going to pour them onto my prepared cookie sheet. This is a cookie sheet with a piece of parchment paper on it. And I've done it without the parchment paper and I just had to slide a thin spatula under because the, the chickpeas separate from the frozen tray really easily, but this is even easier. I have a wide freezer at the bottom of, I wonder if you can see my refrigerator, yeah, there. The bottom of the freezer has enough headroom between the slide out drawers. And what I have in there is low enough that I'll simply put this in, freeze the chickpeas, I'll put them all in here, freeze them, they break apart easily if they are stuck. I put them into one quart Ziploc freezer bags. Some people don't want to use any plastic at all. I don't blame you. I just have no room for rigid containers like glass in my freezer. And so I, I do use plastic. And um, they'll be frozen that way. And if they are somewhat of a brick, I can just tap them on the counter and it breaks apart. And then I'll end up with probably, probably four, maybe three um, Ziploc baggies of the chickpeas. And again, I'll use them for everything. Well, today I'm gonna to show you our favorite hummus. You can buy hummus easily, but this one is so easy to make and so delicious. So let's get started. I want to recommend the book that I got this recipe from, and that is the Kick Diabetes Cookbook. You don't have to have diabetes to love this book. It was written by Brenda Davis and um, Vanesto Molina, 
Uh, Brenda Davis is a dietitian, registered dietitian, who went plant-based, I think it's 26 years ago, uh, before dietitians ever even talked about that. And she not only has nailed it, but she has come up with fabulous recipes that can help the rest of us choose how to eat well regardless of our health. My health was going downhill two and a half years ago and I completely turned it around with a whole food plant-based diet. So today's menu, one recipe, is the hummus that we have um, almost on a daily basis. We dip vegetables in it. I love sweet potatoes, baked sweet potatoes with a dollop of hummus on it. That's a snack for me instead of crackers. Absolutely fabulous, full of fiber and delicious. So let me show you how we go. I have a small uh, Cuisinart food processor. You can have a larger one. You can use a blender. I just love this because it's easy. I emptied into that one can of garbanzo beans drained, although I make in my Instant Pot two pound portions, two pounds dry and then soak them and cook them in the Instant Pot of garbanzo beans, drain them, put them in one quart Ziploc freezer bags and they're in my freezer to be defrosted for Salads, I have a huge salad every day. You can see that on my YouTube channel, how I create my chopped salads. They're gorgeous I and delicious. I also use them for stews. You're going to see a, a, um, a Thai chili, green chili garbanzo bean stew. That was fabulous and I just shot that one. And I use them a lot. I didn't have any defrosted. I decided to, that I needed to make a new batch of the hummus so I didn't want to deal with defrosting them in any way because I wanted to make it now so I used my can and I always get as often as I can garbanzos any grains any beans um, organic if I can find them I'll get them and if we get things at for example Trader Joe's the difference in cost was maybe 20 cents for a can of organic as opposed to not organic. So one can of drained garbanzo beans. Into that, I then add spices. And they include, I, add, I added some, um, a tiny bit of cayenne, a little bit of cumin, and some salt. And I wanted to show you, just in case you don't know, what, well, I think you know what cayenne looks like. It's just a red chili pepper. A little goes a long way to add some heat. But what you might not be familiar with is cumin. Depends on where you live in the country. This is a very Southwest or Mexican flavor, Middle Eastern, it's used. It's very distinctive and it's really one of my favorite spices. Um, so ground cumin, goes in a lot of a lot of my dishes and it adds again a distinctive wonderful flavor. I'm putting in four tablespoons of lemon juice and the recipe is on my website so you don't have to write this down. I'm also adding four tablespoons of tahini. Now some of you are quite familiar with tahini and some of you are thinking and saying, well, what is that? Okay, I don't use processed oils, but that doesn't mean that I don't have fat in my diet. This is where I get the fat in my diet, the nut butters, the um, seeds, the seed butters. I have flax and chia seed every morning, either in a smoothie or in my oatmeal, because that's where we get our omega-3s. And this, tahini, and this one's organic, it's from Trader Joe's, is, and it's not expensive. Now I've seen tahini in some um, specialty stores that a jar this big would be five or six dollars, still worth it, but at Trader Joe's I think it's three something, 350 or 360 or something, and it's delicious, and it's nothing but ground sesame seeds, 
In other words, hold ground sesame seeds, period. When you buy it, there's a cap of oil on it. That is organic sesame oil. You can pour some of it out if you want and you just want more seed, less of its own oil. The thing is that if you pour too much out, you end up with a sort of a caked um, tahini. It's harder to work with. I pour a small amount out, they stir the rest in, and I leave my tahini, as I call it, pourable. You see that? I'll do it one more time, but I don't want to pour it on the floor. Okay, that way I just poured it into the measuring cup and, and I could have poured it out, but I wanted to get every little bit of it. And then the recipe calls for two ground, or two um, teaspoons, no, two cloves of minced garlic. Well, I chop up my garlic in advance. I buy the big, big um, cloves of garlic, not cloves, but um, the, the heads of garlic. And then I peel them and I chop them. Uh, you'll see in some of my um, videos, I'll show you my favorite chopping tool. It's a Tupperware mini chopper that you just pull a cord and I can put 15 or 18 cloves of garlic in it and zip, 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 and then they're all chopped. And then I keep them in this cute little jar that I got somewhere. And I measured to um, get the quantities right and one teaspoon of my minced garlic is one clove um, okay and then now that is the base recipe plus a third of a cup of water however in her cookbook Brenda Davis and I as I said recommend this um, that is her basic hummus and then she has additional uh, alternatives. Well, one of her alternatives simply says, and it's called a red pepper hummus, and that's the one we love. Uh, quite frankly, I haven't made the other ones. There's a a dried tomato, some dried tomato hummus, a black bean hummus, um, but this one just sort of stuck, and that's what we've, we've continued to do. Um, a third of a cup of fire roasted bell pepper or red pepper. You can do this yourself. Take a couple of bell peppers, cut them in half, take the seeds out, put them in an oven at 375, uh, some like it at 400, and then let them roast about 20 minutes, peel off their blackened skin and you've got your roasted red pepper. Or for a couple of dollars, you can buy this jar. Uh, this happens to be Trader Joe's. They have them at other, at other markets and it's delicious. And it's, again, close to nature because this is um, bell pepper. Oh, they've got a little brown sugar in there. I didn't know that. A little bit of salt and, uh, oh, it's a product of Peru, but I like it a lot. So one third of a cup, actually I cheated and made it a heaping third of a cup of this very nice roasted bell pepper. And I even have a little bit of the juice from the jar because I like that. That's why I won't put in the full third of a cup of water. I like to see what the um, texture is going to be and we'll take it from there. So I'm gonna put a little of the water in. That's it. That's as easy as it is to make hummus. Sorry for the sound. Isn't this a nifty little thing? going to stir it down one time. Oh, the smell is so nice. All right. Stir it down one more time. Now I'll show you how I store it. could make it very, very smooth. I like it just a little bit, um, oh, I'm gonna say chunky, but it's not chunky. Uh, but just, I don't want it absolutely completely smooth. So that simply lifts off. If I pull the center out, because this is a full container, 
I'm going to get some of it running into the middle. So I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna pour it out um, and then pull the center out. And I'll show you a, a little trick somebody taught me. It, it was one of, I was watching one of Chef AJ's videos. If you haven't looked at her whole food plant-based cooking shows or her interviews, look for Chef AJ, Chef AJ Live. Uh, Tammy of Nutmeg Notebook also does whole food plant-based. You don't have to choose to give up your meat and egg and dairy and animal products as I have. Just add more whole fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, grains, and legumes. The more you eat, the healthier your gut, your microbiome is, and the, quite frankly, longer your life. That sounds like a huge statement to me, but I would stand behind it, and all of my research tells me that. All right, I'm a health coach. I work with patients and have going on three years now uh, with a lifestyle medical um, clinic here in Riverside, California, and we see remarkable turnaround in diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and odd things that have to do with body-wide inflammation, including one of our patients who almost lost his leg. Um, started with a bite from a brown recluse, and they couldn't get a handle on it. And they treated him for, I think it was almost a year, and finally said, you'll probably lose your leg. He went whole food plant-based with a vengeance because he had, um, he was convinced and he had, um, he was inspired. And gosh, he and his wife now, they're about my age. She's a little older than 70. She's four months younger than me and I'm 70. And um, they run around like kids now. Okay, I think a second lease on life or on your leg can do that for you. All right, did you see what I did? I put the blade back in. It, there, and there's a lot of food on there and I'd have to whittle it out. I spun it, oops, sorry, and now the blade comes out clean, and what was on the blade is easy to get out of here. So this is how I store it, and this little bit that's left, when you're off camera, I think I'm going to put it on a seed cracker. <laughs> it's going to be an afternoon snap. All right, bang, 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 bang. And this will last us just about a week. This is a two cup bell jar, canning jar. You can use your 12 ounce, but you're gonna have some left over. This is two cups, um, which is 16 ounces. It's pretty, it's a great gift to give somebody and what have you invested um, next to nothing. You can make two of these easily with your one jar of bell peppers. I'm going to show you today a very easy, quick Thai uh, garbanzo bean curry. I want to show you how I'm chopping these onions because I'm going to make this a bit of a cooking class. And that is that, sorry, I forgot my knife. Silly me. All right. I started with a whole onion, cut it down from stem to root, already peeled it and cut one half of it. But I wanna show you a handy gadget. You don't have to use this, but it's handy because I wanna do the bell pepper that I'm gonna use in such a way that it's, it gives me a rather consistent look in the dish and um, in a nice dice. And this is a quick way of doing it. This is called the Vidalia uh, Chop Wizard. And it has a cutting blade. There are three of them, actually. One is great for mushrooms. It slices them. The other is for a fine dice. But I count it. Sorry for the noise. I'm going to do this one more time. Here's another one of those slices. And I hit it hard. Take this off. And you can see that I have a very nice dice here. I just happen to really like the way this performs. And so I use it, especially if I'm doing several things in a dish that I want a consistent dice. I have a zucchini cheddar soup. Look for that. Go to my website, namsimmonson.com. 
look for the um, zucchini cheddar soup. And I love those ingredients to be uh, diced evenly because it looks really cool in this very, well, rather thick orange because of carrot in it uh, soup that um, tastes just like zucchini in a cheddar sauce. And I don't eat dairy, so that's not what's happening. All right. I'm going to now do the bell pepper. And what I've done is I've put the onion into a hot pan. I'm sauteing it. Can you see how it's browning? There's not a drop of oil in there because that's the other thing I don't do. I don't add oil to my food. Doesn't mean I don't have fat. I have plenty of that from, well, for example, the cashews I'm gonna put over this dish and from tahini that I put in my hummus and from nut butters that I love. There's another um, uh, garbanzo bean stew. It's called African uh, peanut stew. You'll see that in my website. And you can click to the cooking show. It takes you right to YouTube where you can watch it as a video. And that has peanut butter and peanuts sprinkled over it. So it's not a matter of being fat phobic. It's a matter of my wanting to eat foods as close to nature as possible. And our added oils, which don't do anything for us nutritionally, simply add a lot of empty calories. Uh, I'd rather eat those calories rather than drink them. So this is browning beautifully. And I'm gonna add the bell pepper I keep a bag in the freezer where I keep all these bits and pieces of vegetables, the stems, long stems from my cilantro when I want a nice chop to use it to sprinkle over a dish, the bottoms of asparagus, the um, Gosh, stem ends of green beans, those hard little wiry things that you don't want to chew on. Um, and all of my spare scraps, and I have a video on that too, homemade broth, take a look at it, uh, go into that. And then when the bag is full, I have a full bag in the freezer right now actually, I could show you, but I think I'm just going to stay on task. You'll see in some of my videos, I'm running all over the place. Uh, but I'll stay on task today. This is going to be our dinner tonight. Tim will be home, gosh, in about, I don't know, 30, 40 minutes. And this dish literally takes maybe 15 to throw together. Although I kind of like to keep it low and let those flavors marry a bit. So that's probably what I'm gonna do. And when I finish with this, you'll see why I like it. It's about $20 on Amazon or Bed Bath & Beyond. Um, it might be a little more if you get the one that has the fine, you know, what does it have? Maybe that's the one with the mushroom slicer. And I liked that, so I got that one. It may have been a few dollars more. Okay, so I'm done with this. And this one also has, this has a, um, oh, this holds the vegetables still so that they don't slide around. And this little grid catcher pulls the food out of that, even though it's easy enough to get out because it has a, a comb that comes with it. I have no affiliation to this. I just happen to like it and use it a lot. But see what I like about this is that I have these nice even um, bits that you'll see when the finished product is done. It just looks nice. And I, I'm not a, I was going to say I'm not a great slicer. That's not so. I just don't have the skills and the speed that a lot of commercial chefs have to get a beautiful dice like that on my own. My son Eric does. I watch him do an onion and he does it in this, well, very quick with his Japanese knife. Um, he's quite a chef and I just don't have those skills. Okay, 
So I'm softening the vegetables. So far, this is simply um, the red onion, I'm sorry, white onion, and I could have used a red onion in here. Red onion has more nourishment than the white onion, but I wanted to keep the color soft. The red onion will simply, will, will darken it just a bit. And I'm softening the vegetables, and then I'm gonna add the flavoring. i give it just a minute more. And then I'm going to add three tablespoons of garlic. So I peel my garlic and chop it all at once. I have a nifty device for that too. You'll see that in some of my videos. It's a Tupperware mini chopper that works really well. In one of the last videos, I chopped 15 big uh, cloves of garlic, like in zip, 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 and it was done. Um, and I also like, you'll find these measuring spoons on Amazon. I saw a chef in a cooking show use this and I thought, oh, does that ever make sense? Because I couldn't get one of these measuring spoons into this and how would I pour the garlic out without getting it all over? So one tablespoon is three cloves of garlic and that's what this that's what I'm aiming for. Did you see I cheated because I like garlic. I added a little bit more. And so I keep these ch cloves chopped up so I can make a meal rather quickly. And did you, I didn't explain to you what I was doing a minute ago when I said I keep all of my, the vegetables, uh, scraps in the freezer and then I turn them into broth. Well, this is my broth. I just bought a water, a, um, uh, one quart bottle and I keep it in the refrigerator like that and this is how I use it. And then when I make the broth, I can have two or three additional, almost quart size containers to put out in the freezer, defrost them and put them in here. Okay, so I've got my garlic sauteing. I'm gonna add to that another ingredient that you will find in the Asian sections of most markets, it's at Ralph's, it's at Vaughn's, um, not at Trader Joe's. I love Trader Joe's, but they don't have it there. Uh, this one is, I can get from Sprouts, well, from a number of places. My local um, Clark's uh, Nutritional Center, which is a market that has a lot of good brands. And I'm looking at this for two tablespoons, and I'm going to use that same tablespoon. I don't worry about the little bit of garlic that's on the back end of it. And this is called green curry paste. This is where we're getting most of the flavor in this dish. All right. And if you look at the ingredients, because I like food as close to nature as possible, if you look at the ingredients, it's green chili peppers, garlic, lemongrass, which I actually grow, um, spices, salt, shallots, and some lime peel. It's very Thai smelling. Well, I went to my garden and I have, I grow Thai basil. I'm in Southern California, so we don't get frosts and I can grow things like Thai basil, which is much more woody than our conventional basil that, um, that soft basil that you would put in a tomato salad. If that gets cold, it just turns brown. This is a little bit more hardy, but it won't take a freeze. And so I, I just picked a little bit of my Thai basil. You don't have to do this. You could add red, regular basil or do without. But I'm making this um, well, with the things that I have around. And another thing that I have is I have, I grew and I keep it small just like my bay laurel I keep very small because I like going out and picking bay leaves and bay laurel is a bush you can buy a tree you can buy but don't let it get to tree size unless you want a 40 by 40 foot tree so I keep mine as a small shrub well same thing with this this is a kefir k-e-f-i-r lime tree and I keep it tiny and it has mean thorns so I keep it small keep it tiny but the leaves are very, very indicative of a Thai flavor. Oh, it, it's almost indescribable, indescribable. They're, it's limey, but there's something more that 
you taste when you go to a Thai restaurant. So I picked one of those and threw it in. And do you need this? Absolutely not. All right. And then I'm going to add a little bit, maybe a quarter of a teaspoon of chili pepper, you know, just crushed pepper. And do you have to have that? No. You may not like something to have that kind of heat to it. All right, then I'm gonna put in, and I wanted to show you some fun measuring cups. My son recommended these to me. They are silicone and they have a waffle outside um, design so that I could put boiling water in here, and I do. When I make, and you'll see this on my website and on my um, channel, when I make my Instant Pot oat groats, I love oat groats, have them in the morning instead of rolled oats. Um, I even have half oat groats and half brown rice that I'm gonna be serving with this just because I happen to have a little of both left and so I mix them in. Uh, so I don't need something that's heat proof for this, but this is a four cup measure and I needed three cups of garbanzo beans. Let me tell you about that. The recipe calls for, and you'll see on the recipe, um, which you will find on my website under recipes, nansimmonson.com. It calls for two 15 ounce cans. If you drain a 15 ounce can of beans, almost all the beans will give you about a cup and a half. So two of them is gonna give you three cups. Well, I didn't use canned beans for this. I make, and I've got a, a video on that too, I make a couple of pounds of garbanzo beans at once. They're dry, I put water, I, I soak them in water and cook them in the Instant Pot and then drain them, put them into one quart Ziploc freezer bags. And this was one of my bags, the, a quart is actually four cups, but um, I had one that I'd already taken some out for my daily salads and um, there was three cups left. It's a little bit more, but it doesn't matter because if I'm a little short on broth, I'll just throw in more coconut milk, uh, which is the moisture here that uh, I'm not using broth for this recipe. I'm using coconut milk. And it's not the coconut milk that you buy in the can, the much more rich one with a, a lot more calories. I still use that in my African uh, stew. I use that canned coconut milk, but the light, um, option as opposed to full fat. But this is just the coconut milk that you get in a, a carton along with your soy milk and uh, almond milk. Let me make sure I'm thinking of everything. Yes, I am. And this one is by So Delicious. It's, um, anyway, only, I don't count calories um, because if you eat whole food, plant-based, Lots of starches, lots of grains, uh, lots of vegetables, stay full all the time. Um, but if you eat that way, unless you're eating too much fat, unless I just go nuts on a nut butter or we always snack on some raw nuts at the end of the day to get our omega-3s, especially walnuts, unless you overdo it with that, uh, you kind of have to work to keep the weight on. Uh, which is kind of fun. So this calls for two cups of coconut milk, but the reason I mentioned it's 45 calories a cup, I'm using two cups, I may use a little more. That's nothing for the amount of servings that you have here. I'm gonna say this will serve four. Um, it could serve more, it could serve less. You know what, this is almost empty. Did you see what I just did? I took a, a wine bo a wine cork out of it. <laughs> this fell out of my refrigerator and the cap snapped off. I would have had this all over the floor except that there was a, uh, you can almost see it in there, the a little foil membrane over it. And so thank goodness none of it spilled. Well, I just happened to put a wine cork in there, wine bottle cork, and it worked just fine. So that's it for the coconut milk. And look at this. So what's going to happen is even though 
I could heat this quickly and serve it right away. I'm gonna let this come to a boil, let it cook for 10 minutes. And you know what I did last time and I really liked it. I mashed, I wonder if I could do that, it's not it's too hot. Well, I could do it later. I mashed against the side some of the garbanzo beans to give it a certain sort of a, a more, a thicker uh, consistency rather than all the beans being separate. It gave the broth a bit of a, um, more of a stew kind of a, uh, an outcome. And I liked that a lot. So I just mashed some of them and releasing that starch will allow that to happen. Okay, so I'm gonna cook it about 10 minutes. Then I'm gonna add a cup, or sorry, two cups. You know what, I'm not gonna do that. I'm just going to finish it. And I'll just let it cook a little bit longer um, off camera. And the reason I said that is, rather than starting the video again and uh, all of that, I'm just gonna show you what this looks like when it's ready to plate, because when you're about to serve this, you bring it to a boil, stir in the spinach, and a quarter of a cup of cilantro. If you don't like cilantro, don't use it. You know, some of us are genetically um, sensitive, taste-wise, to cilantro. It tastes like um, soap to some people. It doesn't me, I, I adore it. Um, but, and, yeah, okay. Look at how beautiful this is. In just minutes, the spinach is going to, the spinach is gonna uh, just wilt. As a matter of fact, what I just did, that was two cups of spinach, Almost always, for example, we had the black bean mushroom chili that's on my site, and you can see the uh, video of it. I served that last night to us and, or for dinner, and I added the same amount of spinach into our mushroom chili, and you'd think, that's really strange. A chili with spinach? Well, the spinach just breaks down, and we've added that much more nourishment. Spinach is loaded with calcium, you wanna use a little lemon to help break that calcium down and make it more bioavailable. But almost always when I do any kind of beans, I'll squeeze a little lemon in the end or lime. And in this dish, at the very end, I'll sprinkle over some cashews and a squeeze of lime. Okay, just to show you what this looks like and how I would serve it, because it's not quite ready yet. Give it a little time, let it cook a little bit, hold off putting the spinach in, but this is how pretty this looks. The spinach will break down, but you're gonna get these colors. The fragrance is lovely because you have the, um, the Thai curry paste. You could use more of the curry paste. If you like, you could add a powdered curry, a little bit of powdered curry. You could add some turmeric to it. Um, depending on your own taste, you can, you can kick it up a little. If you really want some salt and pepper, you can do that. I keep the salt to a minimum, but I do use some. Oh, that looks so good. And then we'll sprinkle over it some toasted cashews. I just had cashew pieces that I toasted in a dry pan. I'm gonna sprinkle a tiny bit more cilantro on it. And look, bon appetit. <laughs> 